Welcome back to Davis Media Access. We're here in the studio for another episode of The City Considers, and I'm pleased to welcome back Davis City Council Member Dan Carson. Welcome back. Thank you for having me. It's been a couple of months, I think, since we've gotten together and, and spoken. And I was taking note that it, it, July 11th will be a year since you were sworn in for your first term as city council member. So let's have a little chat about that year. It's been an eventful year in our community. We've had some tragic losses. We've had some big challenges. Yeah. We've had some success. So checking in with you, how's it feeling from, from your seat? Oh, I'm really nice. enjoying this. Um, it's, it's challenging. I'm learning new things every day. But I feel like we're making progress on the big issues that we talked about in the campaign right. and that we really focused on. Um, and there are all these wonderful side trips of issues <laughs> in Davis that I didn't even know existed uh, before I ran. Right. I won't even ask how many hours and how, much, how big your stack of paperwork is that you've had to go through. Um, what's the biggest takeaway so far, if you can encapsulate that? I think that as long as we keep working with each other closely as we have been, we can make real progress. It may involve compromise amongst our points of view. Uh, this is a really congenial and hardworking group of council members, and we've got a great working relationship with our city manager and our city staff. Mm -hmm. um, we don't count to five when we vote on every issue, um, but I think anybody watching us up on the dais there can see us working, listening to each other, mm -hmm. listening to the public that comes to testify before us, trying to come to meaningful decisions that will move us ahead. And I think we've done that on fiscal issues, housing, economic development, and, and a number of others. So you've just started a laundry list there. I, I mean, this year we've had a downtown planning process. We've had endless debates about parking. Should it be paid? Should it not be paid? We've had a lot of concern about road improvements in various areas of the town. And, and uh, there's just been a lot going on. Last time you were here, we talked a bit about economic development, I believe, yeah. and you were uh, getting ready to move into some conversations with, or the council was with uh, the university. So let's talk about some of the progress there, because I think where we are as, as town and gown is pretty different than where we were a couple of years ago. Absolutely. And that's a huge breakthrough, I think, yeah. for our joint community. In fact, we now have a body called a two by two by two that includes to council members, to high level members of the campus administration, and to county supervisors. Mm -hmm. uh, we have an agenda, we have a set of obligations to each other, we have a binding enforceable agreement. The campus has started the process of building 5,000 beds for students on campus that goes along with 4,000 beds off campus that, right. that, we're, that we're building. They're, they're providing us uh, money to help build transportation improvements. And probably the most important thing is we have an organized process for talking to each other and resolving the really big issues that we have in this community. Mm -hmm. Now, lack of housing, I know, was kind of the, the, the major issue there. And as you said, it's being addressed on multiple fronts now. What were some of the other um, sticking points or some of the other places where we might need to come to better agreement? Well, we wanted, in general, to have a, a sense and an understanding that, that the campus would take ownership of the impacts on our community uh, on housing was, was a very large one and probably the large one, right. but also, also fiscal matters. So for example, from now on, it's now written into this agreement that when they have master agreements where they take over apartment complexes, mm -hmm. those mm -hmm. stay on the property tax rolls okay. uh, and help provide this community, not just the city, but the county and the schools, the money they need to provide the services that go along with either additional students or faculty. That's just one of many examples. Another is we're going in together to rebuild the bike path along Russell that's kind of to the west of 113. That it, it, don't ride it if you wear dentures. It's yes. really bad right now. <laughs> it's pretty bad. <laughs> All right, so we talked a little bit about bike travel. Let's touch on parking. I feel like we have to do that. Oh, it, absolutely. What do you have to say about parking? It's really been a hot topic. Absolutely, and you know we're trying to figure out the future of our downtown and you referenced that downtown plan that sure we'll be working on that we'll be working on well into uh, the next year um, and how we manage cars when I knocked on doors as a candidate over and over and over I heard from folks at the door saying look I have a, a real trouble parking downtown how are you gonna fix this parking meters didn't, on the street did not go over there was right. a strong visceral re reaction to that we listened and we compromised 
And we, we are providing additional paid parking mm -hmm. but it's in strategic locations and parking lots downtown. And that's nothing new. We've already had a paid parking lot. Uh, in particular, down by the train station, we think it's really important because we know there's a share of the parking there that is taken up by folks who drive in from Sacram the Sacramento region, come across the causeway, take our parking spots and jump on the Amtrak station because trains from there. Because we don't charge for it, right? Right. Yeah. It's open season. Those, those spots are filled up on weekdays by 6 a.m. We want to take that back as a resource for us. And that will involve, in part, providing parking charges. And our plan is to include discounts for our local folks who want to drive down there and take the train. Mm -hmm. Now, parking was just one piece of the overall uh, downtown planning process I referenced, so let's talk about that for a minute. There was a whole design charrette process. There was a, a, a lot of opportunities for public input, and where do we stand with that now? What's been your role with that? Sure. Uh, I'm one of two city council liaisons to our downtown planning advisory commission. I go to all the meetings I can. I go to a lot of meetings, so I don't make everyone, <laughs> but I do what I can. Um, and really, the cornerstone of that plan to me is economic development. We're going to go through a process where people will know what they can do with their property. It's form-based code. What's the shape and feel and height that's allowed? Uh, and if there's a historical resource that needs to be pr protected, we'll draw a line around that and say, not here. But creating certainty for people to invest mm -hmm. is one of the keys, we think, to spurring additional investment in downtown. And we've had some, you know, good first steps. Mm -hmm. uh, Mars has, has set up a research center in our downtown. Uh, so high, high uh, income jobs uh, supported going out to our local restaurants. That's at 5th and G, right? That's right. And, okay. That's right. We think it's a model for other things that we could make happen. Okay. Um. <laughs> so I I wasn't sure I was going to ask you about this as, as a member of the former broadband <laughs> advisory task force. Everything is fair game. But everything is fair game. Um, so we the, the broadband task force closed out its work um, la a few weeks ago, last month. And uh, there was a council meeting in which uh, you had written an op-ed with concern really about the fiscal impact of the, the project. So I wanted to give you an opportunity to just say a few more words about that. I know the vote... Uh, was really was in favor of supporting the the task force recommendation that more research is needed and so if you could maybe talk about if there's any uh, movement there there may not be at this point in the council year right now yeah. we, we just made our decision there to move forward right. do some additional work trying to look at the situation the concern I raised was really what came out of two very good consultant reports that were produced under the auspices of the broadband task force itself Right. And, and it raised really serious concerns about the idea of our having a $136 million bond issue, a huge, uh, significant tax subsidies at a time when just in the last year, this community failed to pass a parcel tax measure to fix our streets and roads. So it, it's, it's a difficult path. I think there, are, there is a path forward. What we all want is competition. We don't want a monopoly by AT&T and Comcast. Mm -hmm. We want to bring in new partners and leverage the assets that the city has there and in other respects to see if we can create more competition, create higher higher levels of service. Um, and it is an economic development tool. Mm -hmm. It's just, we don't, uh, my personal view is it's going to be very challenging to try to do this with a huge subsidy from the taxpayers. I just don't think they'll support that. Okay, and one of your concerns was you, you referenced a, a large funding uh, gap that the city has. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Sure. Uh, uh, our, when I previously was on the Finance and Budget Commission right. and its chair uh, with the work of some very good members of, of our, our commission, uh, we produced 20-year projections with also with the help of city staff that showed that we've got not a deficit or imminent bankruptcy, but in the long term, we, we, we lack the resources to pay all of our personnel costs, like pensions and retiree health care. And we lack all of the money we need to keep our streets and roads and parks and city buildings up to snuff. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about the money to build new 50-meter pools. We're talking about just keeping roads at a, an appropriate level of service over time. And we, don't, we have work to do. We're turning over every rock every day mm -hmm. at City Hall, looking for strategies 
that they either generate additional revenue or constrain costs. Right. We've had some success, but we have a lot more work to do there, and we're not out of the woods. And so taking on a huge new financial liability right. would be very worrisome. Right. Now, we have an election coming up next March. And are we going to be seeing, uh, I can't remember if we're going to be seeing parcel tax renewal in that, in that particular, or if that's later in, in the year, in 2020. So uh, in terms of what the school district does with the mm -hmm. parcel tax, we've yet to hear from them what their timing is intended to be. What the city will have is an effort at renewal of its one cent sales this tax sales that we tax. added on. Okay. Uh, and it's a huge issue for our city. Right. It's about $9 million in a typical year of about $60 million general fund. And that general fund is what supports fire, police, right. parks, senior center. The services that we really treasure around this place. Yeah. The two-year budget that we just adopted this last week mm -hmm. assumes renewal of the, that tax measure at its current level. Uh, that, that issue will start to be discussed by our council even next month. The whole, the whole issue of taxation is very complex. As chair of the Arts Alliance, I've learned a bit about the transient occupancy tax and how, among many other things, it funds some of our public art projects. So, yeah. so thank you voters for that. Thank you council for that. Um, but it, it, there's just a lot of different ways in which we as a community have chosen to tax ourselves, whether we'll continue to want to do that, I think is is a valid question right now. And the hotel tax is a really great example, yeah. where the foresight of the prior city council, uh, I, whom I advised as a commissioner, but right. they were the folks up there voting and making the decisions. They decided to to provide approval for a couple of new extended stay hotels. The one on on uh, down by the Target off of Mace Boulevard is right. very close to completion now. And we know that's going to generate somewhere in the realm of five to six hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars a year for the city, year after year, to pay for all those those good things that we need. Yeah. So I know we're getting down to our last couple of minutes. What do you think is lies in the year ahead for you? Any particular priorities you're looking forward to tackling? Uh, well, first of all, you mentioned Measure O. That's that's a really important one, yep. and I'm I'm anticipating I'm going to play a significant role in helping to pull together the campaign to renew that measure uh, next March. Um, that downtown plan, we're going to be reaching critical decisions in around August. We expect a draft of that plan to come forward. Okay. We'll have a period for all of our community to weigh in and tell us what they think about it. Uh, and then we'll go through an environmental process. And then we now just know that there'll, there'll be a proposal for uh, an innovation center at the east end of town. Um, uh, and we haven't seen the details. It's, it, they've dusted off a proposal that, that was being considered at City Hall for a couple of years. Right. And so we're very interested in seeing the details, what they have in mind. And again, we're really trying to encourage the folks in our community to weigh in with the applicants directly, but also with our city staff and give us their ideas on sure. what should that look like? Yeah. What should our goals be for a, any project like that? And then we'll, we'll see if it's a good project or bad. I'm, right. I'm optimistic it fills a need uh, we really need to keep these smart millennials coming out of UC Davis here and, and helping to produce revenue for the city mm -hmm. and jobs. And you're right, that idea of an innovation center has been around for, I don't even know how long, but I, I feel like I, I talked to people 15 years ago about it. Yeah. So I know, you, you're, you are seeing a number of really important issues kind of coming to a head. Yeah. We are really trying to move forward in the city on the big decisions. We're not afraid to, to take on parking meters or we, you know, we worked uh, uh, last week to try to rearrange our budget a bit to put more money into fixing our streets and roads with the money we have. Right. We know there's more we need to do, but we're, we're, we're taking those head on and we're not running away from right. it. Homeless, housing, you name it, I think you can look at a council that has taken these issues seriously. Um, they're all a work in progress, right. but we're, we're really working on them. We didn't even get to touching on homelessness because there has been there have been a number of community forums and, and a number of developments on that front. So I'm going to have to have you back another time so we can tackle that. But meantime, I want to thank you for taking the time, as always, to come in and chat and tell people the best way to reach you, if you would. Sure. It's my email address is the best way to reach me, and that's dcarson at cityofdavis.org. Okay. And um, I've learned that you're pretty responsive, so thank you for that. All right. 
you've been watching The City Considers here at Davis Media Access. You can find episodes online uh, through davismedia.org. You can also catch them on DCTV Channel 15, on the Comcast channel, and on our YouTube channel under Davis Media Access. Thanks so much for tuning in, and uh, check out the rest of the programming while you're there.